Hi everybody, it's Bonnie Jean from BonnieJean.com. Welcome back to today's video. Today's video number 20 in Sue Worthington's Facebook Fan Page Challenge. And it's my privilege to talk to you today about the Logo Creator. Now what is the Logo Creator? Well, by the name you would think that it is a program that creates logos. And it does. But it does so much more. You can also make your Facebook covers, tabs, quotes, blog post graphics, headers, ad banners, and any other graphic that you could possibly imagine inside this program. Now for the people who feel they don't have a creative bone in their body, I believe this program would work for you because it is so much easier than GIMP or Photoshop and the graphics are already pre-made. All you really have to do is just put them on the grid and place them in logical order that you want them to be in and save the file. So let's get started. When you first open up the program, you're introduced to this interface. You will select the template set between my template and the logo template. Now I have the Facebook timeline graphics as well as the people graphics, but they don't come with the original package that you buy. When you buy this program, you will get the logo template. And there's plenty in there for you to choose from because there's over 200 layouts. So as you can see by looking at the screen, there's plenty of colorful, versatile graphics here for you to choose from. And really, the only hard part is deciding which ones to pick to work on first. This is the main part of the interface. And up here at the top you will have a drop down menu that gives you alphabets, arrows, backgrounds, banners, all the way down to swooshes to work with. Now if you didn't buy the people pack you wouldn't have anything that's labeled people pack here. And if you didn't buy the Facebook timeline images you wouldn't have that showing either. So I have them because I bought them. So what you want to do, the first thing we want to do is we want to change this graphic so that it can work with Facebook. So as you can see the canvas size is 590 by 456, but Facebook likes 403 pixels. So in order to change the size of this, it's going to shrink. So the best thing would be to move this, these items out of the way because once we start making this screen smaller, we want to be able to still click on them. So I'm going to go up here to options and I'm going to format my canvas. That's what I picked. And I'm going to set the canvas to the size for Facebook, which is 403 by 403 and say done. So now we have 403 by 403. And as you can see, the original graphic that we opened up is a little bit too big for this box, but that's okay. We're going to delete this and we're going to start from scratch and we're going to make our own event, our upcoming event announcement. So I'm going to format the canvas. This is the background. So let's go find a different colored background. I kind of like the gray. So let's go with the gray. So in order to put this into your canvas, all you have to do is click on it with your mouse, hold the button down and slide it into the canvas. Now, as you can see, it is not big enough to cover that yellow background. Well, in order to fix that, you click on image format, and then you'll have an, an image scale here. It's a sliding scale, so if you go higher, it'll make that background larger. If you take the scale down lower, it makes the background smaller. So you could even use this if you wanted to as essentially a window into another background. But that's another tutorial for another day. So let's make this big so it covers our canvas. Okay. Now, you can't really see it yet, but that graphic is still clicked on. And you can tell anything that's still clicked on or selected in this case by this yellow outline. So in order to undo that, you'd either have to click on the canvas to the side, which is very hard to do once the window is, you know, smaller. Or you can come up here to edit and say deselect all and that will also deselect it. So let's go back to our original canvas size of 403, of 403, and hit done. Now we're back to our 403 canvas size for Facebook quote graphics. So the next thing we want to do is start pulling other objects into the mix here. So I'm going to go down to the spheres. I want a sphere. I want something that's going to be in the background behind my text 
to highlight it. And I like this yellow one here, so we're going to pull this one in. Let's scale that down a little bit. Now, I changed my mind. You can hit the delete key on that and get rid of it. Or go up to edit. Say cut image. I don't really like that one. I want a yellow sphere, but I didn't really like the indentation on that one. Aha, here's one. I like this one much better. So let's put this one on the canvas. So now we need some text. So let's tell everybody that we're having an upcoming event. And I want the upcoming to be a different font than my event. So we're going to type those separate and hit add text to canvas. And you just highlight it and once it's, you know, highlighted in yellow, you know that it's available for you to push around the screen. So let's push our sphere back up there and let's highlight this text. And we're going to go over here to edit. And that shows you if you want to change the upcoming to a different word, you would change your word and hit implement and it'll show on the canvas. But we want to keep that. I just wanted to show you how to change your text. So let's go to format for our text. Okay, and let's select our font. I want a script looking font. And I'm going to move that up here. Okay, now I don't like how, you know, there's so much spacing in between there. So in order to change the space, we'll go down here and change it to zero. And now it's much nicer and closer together. Then I want to put this event somewhere in here. And I don't like the spacing on that either, so let's turn that to zero. And 50 is a little bit too small. Let's make that a little bit there. Okay. So let's see, we have an upcoming event. And it's going to be a challenge, and there's going to be people involved. So I'm going to go up here and pick my silhouette, pick a crowd, and I'm going to pick a silhouette that I like. And it's got, it has to be a crowd, it can't be just one person. So this one's good, so let's drag that in there. Now it's too large, so we're going to have to go to the image scale and scale that down a bit. Another little trick too that you might want to keep in mind, you see the grid in the back of the canvas here. Now if we go return and we go up here to options and format our canvas, at the bottom of that selection screen here for the sizing of the canvas, you could also change the layout grid increments and I want them to be, I want the grid to be bigger and I'll explain to you in a minute why. Okay. My focal point on this graphic should be at four different areas of this graphic. That's right here, 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 and here. So if I can keep most of my graphic layout within that grid, I will be falling right in line with the rule of three. So just bear in mind that your text and everything else that you place on this canvas does not have to be dead center. In fact, dead center can be god-awful boring at times. And if you put pieces that are maybe off center a little bit, it brings your graphic to life. Okay, so I don't like the black text because it clashes with the black silhouette. So let's add some more text down here. This event is going to be about the 90-day residual money. Product <laughs> Creation Challenge. That's a mouthful. Let's add that to the canvas. And I'm going to place that over top of here. So let's go and change the color to that to white. Then let's go to Format. Take out that spacing. 
you know, I decided to pick a different font. I don't like that big impact font. Let's pick something tinier, a little bit more smooth. Oh, I can't get the red. And let's take the size down a bit. There. Now let's see if we can grab a hold of this and drag it. All right, so it needs to fit on top of these people, but it, it runs off the screen, so we'll have to edit this. Let's go down here to edit, and let's change the money. Make it go down the next line. Let's put this down the next line too, see how that looks, and hit implement. that looks okay now we're going to take care of the spacing in here move that closer all right now we should be able to get a date now let's go back to edit and let's implement this go back to format and make sure it says center okay now let's move this over if it lets us You can also move around not only with the mouse, but as long as you don't have anything selected over here on the left hand side of the interface, you can move this text around with your arrow keys on the keyboard. So you can move them up and down and left and right and situate it however you want. And one thing I don't like about the program is the fact that it gives you these grids. You can set the grid but it doesn't give you rulers and it doesn't give you the ability to zoom in on what you're working on, which in my case makes it very hard for me because I have one eye, so it's very hard for me to see some of these graphics and to see whether or not I'm placing things, you know, exactly where I should be placing them on the screen. So my depth perception isn't very good either. So I'm really surprised that I can do graphics at all. Okay, so see how this ball, this sphere, has this highlighted area? That makes me, that tells me that's where the light's coming in on that. So we're going to go over to the image format and we are going to change the angle of that so that the light is coming from the bottom. See how that yellow part's moving as I tune it up here? We want the light coming in right there. So if somebody's holding a flashlight against this ball, that means there's going to be a shadow cast back here. So we have to add a shadow to this that looks more realistic. So we turn the image menu and let's go to image shadow. And we want to turn it on, but the shadow is not in the proper place for me. So we are going to change some of these things around a little bit. First of all, let's lighten it up. Um, hmm. Okay, about 25, which means we have to make this shadow come on this side because the flashlight is shining over here. So we'll turn this around by moving the angle, maybe about a 180 or so, or as close to 180 as I can. Now it's too dark. I don't like how dark it is, so I'm going to tone it down a bit by using the shadow opacity. I'll take it down to a 15 if I can get it there. Just so you can barely see it. And that looks really nice. Now let's do something with this black text. Let's do an outline, turn the outline on, and let's make it white. Yeah, that looks good. 
let's put a different color. Let's put a gradient on the event. So go to color, hit gradient, and then it gives you the opportunity here to pick the colors that you want. And since we've got this orange thing going on here, so let's go closer to an orange color. And let's make this color black. And I don't quite like it. Uh, I want that black closer to the bottom. Ew. Yeah, see, more on the bottom. Okay, but I don't like this orange color, so let's pick something different. Let's put an outline on this too. Maybe that'll make it pop. There we go. Now make this shadow. Go back to image color. No, image shadow. Let's make the shadow a little bit. Big tit. Just a pinch. <laughs> Darker. Okay, that looks good. I like that. And then basically, there you go. So we have a Facebook quote that we made, and it just took maybe about 15 minutes, didn't really take that long. So what you do now is once you have it done is you can go up here to file and save it as a PNG file. That'll open up, you know, into your computer. And you have to name it. And save it out.